What's the first thing you need to do to survive the season? You might be surprised how many people in South Florida don't know the answer to that. Whether you're a longtime resident or have never been through a hurricane here, you have to have a plan. What do we have, honey? Um, we don't have much <laughs> of a hurricane plan, to be honest with we you. We might be lacking a hurricane plan. Okay. CBS 4 News anchor Rick Fulbaum and his family have never experienced a South Florida hurricane. I visited Rick at home where Rick's wife Kelsey and their five young children plan to ride out the next storm. And as you just heard, they have no plan. So let's start with the water. Four gallons per person. What are like good examples of food you should have in the house? You need to think about uh, non-perishable food, usually canned items, uh, items that don't require a lot of cooking for your family for at least four days. One of the things we do is we freeze water, bottled water, uh, usually the jugs don't work as well, they split, and then we transfer these into the refrigerator when the power is out so it keeps the food in the refrigerator cold. So. That will keep the food in the refrigerator cold? Yeah, it keeps it, it doesn't freeze it, but it just keeps it from warming up. Wow, that's so. cool. I would never think yeah. that. You're going to want to put it in a watertight bag. Surprisingly, most people don't realize that your dishwasher is a great place to store documents in a really bad hurricane really? because it's watertight on the inside and uh, it's, it's anchored to the house. This is really good because it's the lowest floor. It's under the staircase. It's reinforced. So this is one of the rooms that will, will survive even a strong hurricane. Make sure the gas is in good shape in it, maybe fresh gas if is what it needs, and just pull it to see that it starts. But this is gonna teach me how to put it together as the storm approaches. That's awesome. Yeah. So let's go put some of these up, see how easily they go up. We'll check back in later in this half hour with Rick and his family to see how they're doing with their hurricane plan. As part of your plan, you need to know if you live in an evacuation zone that is at risk for storm surge. We talked about storm surge earlier, so what if a storm surge evacuation order is given? Do you even know if you live in an evacuation zone? We spoke with Kurt Summerhoff, Miami-Dade's emergency manager, about how the storm surge evacuation zones have changed in recent years. Okay, well, you can see the outline of the of the of the old zones uh, with the uh, with the black outline here, and you can see how much it's it's increased in other areas of Dade County that are now uh, we now have uh, being impacted by storm surge. So, the area along Biscayne Bay, up and in, including uh, Key Biscayne here, um, are the most vulnerable to to storm surge. So that's our zone A. Um, then when you're talking um, in terms of, of the next vo most vulnerable, you're talking our barrier islands, those areas in along the intracoastal, and then those areas just, just inside of uh, Zone A down in, in South Dade. And then uh, the areas, uh, again, it, it further in, uh, increases out uh, all the way out into, this is Chrome Avenue out here. Summerhoff says that most likely partial areas of a zone would be evacuated, such as Zone B south of Kendall Drive. And if you live in an evacuation zone, you should find a place just outside of your zone if given the order to leave. What we always say is we want people to uh, hide from the wind but run from the water. So we always say you don't have to evacuate but only tens of miles. So we want people to, to get out of the zone. Uh, if you're in an evacuation zone that we identify for, for evacuation, we just want you to not necessarily leave the county but just leave the zone. We're making it easy for you to see if you live in a Miami-Dade evacuation zone. Just go to the Hurricane News section of our website, cbsmiami.com. Click on the Evacuation Zone interactive map. Then enter your address and zip code. In Broward, the evacuation zones are much simpler because of the way the metro area meets the ocean. Sure, we basically have two zones, two evacuation zones. If you see this pinkish area, that's uh, Plan A. During a mandatory evacuation, calls for evacuations from the Intracoastal Highway, or A1A, east during our and that's typically for a category one or two uh, storm or hurricane. Uh, for anything higher than a category three, uh, we would institute an evacuation from Federal Highway uh, East. Just like in Miami-Dade, those zones may be split into smaller areas. For example, areas north of Las Olas in Zone A would evacuate. In the Keys, evacuation orders vary by storm because there are no evacuation zones. Decisions are made on a tiered basis beginning with non-residents, special needs, and if necessary, all local residents. 
I'm CBS 4's Erica Sargent. If you have to evacuate, you may need to make arrangements for your pets. Try to take your animal with you. Do not leave them alone at home. If you're heading to a pet friendly shelter, your pets must be pre registered. Also, make sure your pet's collar has an ID tag, that they have been microchipped, and that all of their prescriptions have been filled. And if you will need evacuation assistance or require specialized transportation to evacuate, you must also pre register for that. Visit CBSMiami.com for a link to the forms you must fill out or call 311 for more information.